Pedro from Me and Pure Reacts. I'm here today with Thomas Youngblood from Camelot to talk about their upcoming live album, I Am the Empire, live at the O13, out August 14th on Napalm Records. How are you doing? Doing great, doing great. Excited about the release. It was uh, a lot of fun, and I can't wait for the fans to see it. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. I've had the chance, obviously, to not only listen to the album, but to also watch the live DVD uh, of this wow. release. And, and the first question I have for you is, what are your personal expectations when it comes to a Camelot live album? Well, I mean, the goal of this was to, to kind of have a snapshot in time for, for the band, like where we are, the growth of the band over the years especially since the, the last eight years with Tommy as our singer um, to show the growth. And then, um, you know, we had a DVD, I think it was in 2007, maybe. Um, and I'm very proud of that DVD, but I wanted to kind of raise the bar with this one. And, and uh, I think we were able to achieve that and bring in the guests that I wanted and find them available. It was just uh, a lot of planning, but it, in the end of the day, it was turned out killer. I'm very, very happy about it. And um, it's a testament to surrounding myself with a great team of people, you know. Is there any added stress? I mean, I'm sure every time you go on stage to perform, there's always a little bit of butterflies in your stomach, regardless of how many times you have done it. But is there a little bit of extra stress when you're going on knowing that not only you have to perform, but everything is being recorded at the same time for, for a release? Yeah, I mean, there was, and I had to keep reminding myself to just do the normal show, you know? Um, it's the same, in a sense, when you play like a big festival. Vacan, for example, if you're playing in front of 100,000 people, you have to remind yourself to do your normal show because if you try to overthink it, you're going to screw up, you know? Um, so I, I told myself that, and as the concert was going on and things were working out, there was no technical problems. And that took a lot of the stress off of me, you know, because you can plan as much as you want for any kind of event, no matter what it is. And there's always going to be some technical thing you have to worry about. Luckily for this show, uh, we had one chance, recorded it, and there was no technical problems. And uh, that's that's good. Does it make it a little bit more difficult for you? I know there's a lot of bands that when they release these live DVDs or live albums, for that matter, they take songs from different performance throughout a tour. This one, it was from beginning to end, one venue, one show. Does that make it a little bit more difficult, but at the same time, a little bit more rewarding as far as the final content that the fans are going to get? Yeah, I mean, it's it was a one-off, one time only in the history of the band that you'll see this concert because of the guests, the set list. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that was a very important aspect of it, I think. Um, we did discuss doing different concerts on the tour, but we wanted to have the this kind of production you can't really do that at every venue um so you have to focus on one and go for it you know we we rented the venue the night before set everything up went through run through ran through a few things um did some walkthroughs with the guests but we didn't over rehearse it i think that's important to keep that kind of nervous energy that, that everybody sees at a, at a live concert um and yeah, that's an important aspect, I think, for any any band to make it live, you know, make it try to capture that sense of, of what the concert really is, you know. Uh, how much discussion was there between you guys in, in making the final set list for this show? I'm sure you guys wanted to make it as special as possible. And there's some some uh, Easter eggs hidden throughout this this release. So how much work and how much back and forth was there to narrow it down to the final set list? Well, from my point of view, I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to kind of capture what's happening with Camelot now. Um, so most of the set, in my opinion, was focused more on the last eight years with Tommy. Um, you know, definitely the new record, The Shadow Theory. Um, we didn't want to rehash the past too much, which we, which is kind of our philosophy anyway. Um, but songs like March of Mephisto with Alyssa had to be done because she was there and she crushes it. Um, if you've seen the March of Mephisto, you know what I'm saying. Um, and, you know, like I said, the snapshot in time for where, where Camelot is, where, with the guests that we have now, like Charlotte, like Lauren Hart, Alyssa, Elise. Um, this is the era of Camelot, uh, the newer era of Camelot that we wanted to capture. 
Um, so we did some old, older songs, like I said, but for the most part, we wanted to focus on what's happening with the band now. And I think that kind of dictated the set list. Um, we, we added Burns to Embrace because my son was, uh, we flew my son over for that. Uh, he sings in the choir for that. Um, and then we ended up doing that on the whole tour without him. But um, So it wasn't as hard as you might think. And I'm, I would not change the set list at all. I mean, some fans are like, why didn't you do Center of the Universe? But we did that on the last DVD. Um, so I think the, the set list, in my opinion, is, was the right one. You mentioned the guests. There's a lot of guests, and obviously that adds a different dynamic to the show, but it wouldn't be a Camelot show and definitely wouldn't be a Camelot DVD without the guests. Uh, how hard was it for you to get all of them to be able to attend and be there for this performance? I'm sure it's not an easy task. Yeah, that was hard. I mean, we actually tried to do this during the Haven tour, um, and the schedules weren't working out. And I said, okay, I don't want to do it because these are the guests I want. So we kept working on the scheduling and everybody's managers, et cetera. Um, and we finally narrowed it down to the date that we had. And that's, that's what we did. Um, so that was the hardest part, honestly, is getting everybody's schedule open because it's very difficult, especially uh, some of the folks, they, they tour a lot. So it's really hard for them to go to their band and go, hey, I can't, I can't tour on this Saturday, which is a prime day, you know. Um, but it all worked out in the end luckily. And uh, yeah, it went good. So now you have all of these moving parts. You have the guests that you have to nail it down on all of them being available on that day. And then you have the venue because you obviously have to set up a lot of stuff in order to get the maximum result from a both audio and video perspective. Uh, how much of that went into consideration when, when choosing this specific venue? I thought, by the way, the venue is absolutely gorgeous. So Thank definitely you. added a different effect to the DVD. But how much how much of that also played a role into this release? Well, the first thing was we decided which country wanted, we wanted to do it at because the Netherlands has been so good to Camelot. You know, the, the past 10 years have always been sold out shows. So um, we said, OK, well, we definitely want to do this in the Netherlands. Our kind of home venue in the Netherlands is the O13. They had just uh, recently enlarged the capacity, which made it better for us. Um, but for me, it was like that that aspect that technically this is a great venue. The sounds amazing. Um, also, it has a production value to do something stunning visually. But also, it's not like it's ten thousand people and there's, there's no synergy between the band and the fans. We wanted to keep a little bit of that intimacy. Um, there's a song where Tommy's actually in the middle of the crowd singing. And it would have been a little bit harder to do that in a, like a small arena or something. So um, that was that was kind of the criteria for me. It was like, I want a venue that we could do a big production on, pyros, et cetera, but also have a little bit of uh, intimacy for for the, the synergy between the band and, and uh, the fans, which is part of a Camelot show. Uh, I saw you guys live in Toronto during <clears throat> North American tour. So when I went into this DVD, I had a, a, a preconceived idea of what a Camelot live show is. And the first thing that I took away from this show is that, wow, it really represented well what I experienced live. So for a fan that perhaps never seen the band live, I felt that you guys were able to capture that essence of what a live Camelot show really feels, sounds like. It's almost you can taste it when you're watching the DVD. Is that your main goal, your final result, the light at the end of the tunnel for you guys to be able to to recreate that in an in a audio and DVD format? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you want fans that know the band to kind of go, yeah, that's the band I know, you know. But then you also want fans that don't know the band to say, oh, wow, I've never heard of this band or I've heard the name. I didn't know what they were about. Oh, cool. I mean, I want to go to the next show. So that's definitely an important aspect, I think, of uh what we tried to put into this, sure. Now, if you compare the Toronto show in terms of uh, production, it's a little different, but it doesn't matter where we play because we could play in a, a even smaller venue than the one in Toronto, but we still want to give the fans 100% every night. And that's an important work ethic that I've learned from day one, you know. I have to ask you this because I don't know how much of you uh, or how much you were involved in the process. I thought the cinematography was absolutely exquisite. The Thank amount you. of camera angles that you guys had, 
the the snapshots over the crowd you you gave me the sense sometimes that I was there because the shots were so up and close it was almost like I was in the front row watching you guys perform and at the same time you gave me the sense of 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 being further back and just taking it all in so all the different experiences that I've had at a Camelot show which is being in the front and then moving a little bit further to the back to kind of take it all in mm. how much were you involved in, in finalizing all the editing that I'm sure went into putting this DVD together I mean um there's probably nine versions of the concert, <laughs> <laughs> but the first version looked, looked really good, you know? So, um, our director, Jens de Vos, who is out of Belgium, did an amazing job, but there were little things here and there that we would change, you know? Um, but for the most part, the first version is pretty close. There's just tiny little things we changed, but I know when we were setting up that I told him I wanted to have a camera from the top row at, in, in the back of the venue. Um, I just wanted to kind of capture the scale of everything. Mm -hmm. And he was able to spice some of those shots in there a little bit. Um, a, I think it's important if, you, if you're going to do a concert like this, a, a Blu-ray, whatever, that you show all the different angles where people, you know, whether you're in the front. If you just show the front, that's boring, you know. So I think it's, it's cool that you noticed that there is different angles, different uh, aspects of, of the show that kind of puts people in different places in the venue which is important i also felt that it was really well timed as far as the tracks are concerned the way the the, the shots are edited and the way they're cut from musician to musician or the crowd really allows the songs to have almost a life of their own and you're kind of flowing through the shots as you're flowing through the track so you, you have to understand camelot and, and and your music in order to create the video effect that goes well with that track. Otherwise, things would seem a little bit out of sorts. Uh, yeah. is, is that something that it's easy or it's a little bit harder to achieve to get that, that motion that the music goes with the video? Well, we sent Jens the set list a good month before the, the concert. So he was able to kind of study the, the songs. We even sent him the live version. So Because not every version is the same as the record. There's extended parts, etc. So we sent him the um, the set list for him to study, and I think he did an amazing job of kind of understanding the flow. Um, you know, some of the edits, like we we edited out some of the pauses maybe between a couple of songs. Well, I think maybe two songs, um, but uh, I think that's a testament to 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 Yin's directing and and editing. He did an amazing job. And we've talked about the video, but I want to, you know, at the end of the day, this is a concert, so you have to talk about the audio. Uh, the first time going through, the, the the main thing that jumped at me was that you guys were able to create the audio of a live show, but oh boy, it almost sounded like you guys recorded it in a studio. It, oh, it's really? So, <laughs> it's so clear, like it's so crisp. I'm, I mean, you, you don't feel like there's one instrument kind of overshadowing another, or, or Tommy's vocals kind of getting hidden behind something else. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it, it was really well balanced. So it, you you know it's live because it obviously it, it's a live concert. But at the same time, it felt like you guys just recorded it in this perfect setting inside of a studio. Well, it was a perfect setting for a concert. Um, that O13, the sound is amazing. But we had two Pro Tools systems on on site, so every instrument was recorded. We had two mics on everything, two mics on all vocals, or two inputs, for example. Um, and I've, heard, I've watched DVDs where it sounds more like somebody put a microphone in the middle of the venue and just pointed it at the stage, which is, I guess, okay. But what's the point of re recording everything and the crowd and, and not mixing it? That's, that was the thing, you know, because you'll hear some live shows and all you hear is the snare from the, from the drums, you know, or the snare is like super loud. So um, I think Sasha did a great mix of taking that, that live feed, which goes directly to Pro Tools, but also mixing the ambient mics. You know, that's kind of the trick between doing any kind of live record. You know, you have ambient mics that have the crowd. It's got the actual PA, but then you have direct signals from the band. Um, you know, like I play Kemper now. My Kemper goes directly to, to the Pro Tools. Um, uh, the drums are directly mic'd, you know. But I, I'm very happy with the sound. I think it's it, it's a, to me it's that perfect blend of, um, what you want, what you would really want the concert to sound like, live. You know, um, so I'm I'm very happy with it.
Oh yeah, it definitely felt to me that I was center stage. You know what I mean? Like I'm probably in front of the sound of the sound stage, and I have the perfect PA coming at me with everything just perfectly balanced. It didn't feel like it, I was in one side of the venue where I'm only perhaps hearing more of the guitars and the vocals and not enough of the drums or or or, or vice versa. And I felt for a band like Hamlot uh, and for a singer singer like Tommy. The, the sound quality for a live recording has to be exquisite. Uh, otherwise, you're going to miss uh, you, you're going to miss the essence of the band. Yeah. And, and I felt like you guys were really able to capture that. Great, thank you. Uh, wonderful job. Uh, Under Grey Skies. I have to mm -hmm. ask you about this track because this was the live premiere. And uh, I mentioned early, uh, you know, Easter eggs on this on this DVD. This is definitely one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, how rewarding was it for you guys to finally mm -hmm. play this song in a, in a live setting? It was great, and it's probably the only time we'll ever do it. Um, so it's a one-off, pretty much. We had rehearsed it on... Let's see, Delane uh, was our guest on the U.S. tour a couple of years ago, and I think we rehearsed it then, but we never played it. And then um, we invited Charlotte to the show, and we did it the night before in a rehearsal, and that was the only time we ever played it until the show time. So I was so nervous about that song because there's a lot of to it, the acoustic guitar, etc. Um, but when you when you see it and hear it, it's it came out perfect, I think. Um, and it's one of my favorite songs from from the Haven record, you know. Um, so yeah, it, I'm just happy she was able to to join us because uh, she's she's now part of our history, you know. Hey, it was such a treat. Uh, I was not, ex I mean, I saw, the, obviously, I saw what the set list was before I pressed play, mm -hmm. but I was still so excited to get to that track to see how the final result was going to be. And I was yeah. definitely disappointed. I mean, I was not disappointed with any of the tracks, which brings me to the next question is, do you have a specific favorite one on this, on this release? Is there one that you look back and like, well, this is going to be very memorable and I'm really glad we were able to capture it. Besides I've this got, track. I mean, I've this got one, a few. I've got a few. I mean, like, for sure, Burns to Embrace with my son, you know. Um, when I told him he, he, we were going to fly him over for the DVD, he was, like, so excited, you know. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're usually working with your son, right? Is that your son yeah, that's yeah. doing your things? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's me, my son, um, yeah. I was going to invite my son down here in a minute to say hi to you. But um, uh, Burns to Embrace, for sure. Um, March of Mephisto, I think, came out unbelievable. Yeah. Alyssa's just crushing it um sacrimony of course with elise and Alyssa. um that blew me away there's a... that track blew me away because i was not i mean like i said i saw on the set list but I, I was i still blew me away when the two of them came on stage with such like mm. this glorious yeah. glorious yeah, I got goosebumps stuff. watching the i got goosebumps watching the the dvd uh version of that because you know on stage i'm, I'm used to them being there but then when you see them descending down yeah. it's just like it's like a Avengers thing or something. It's so cool. But um, I don't know. There's like so many cool moments. And like I said, it for me, you know, doing this for so many years and loving what I do, but to be able to kind of capture this moment in time for the band, especially when you think about now, like what's not happening, all this band's not touring. It's just crazy to 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 think back and think about how fortunate we are to be able to have done that, you know, um, and to release it now when there's really nothing going on. And so, um, yeah, I'm just I'm just proud of, uh, of of the band, of the fans, of the all the crew guys, everything. You know. And uh, I was going to ask you about that because obviously there's no touring, there's no shows. This is not something that it was done in the spur of the moment. There was a lot of work that went into this DVD, this recording. Is this the perfect time to release a live album right now, considering that there's no live shows? For sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't even consider releasing a, a production album right now. I would totally... Actually, technically, we were supposed to release a new album in March of next year, and we've moved that basically to August, September. Um, so, yeah, the timing is... Unfortunately, you know, the timing is perfect to do this. Um, and I think... For the Camelot fans, it's a, it's going to be a, a decent holdover until the next tour happens, which will be late 2021, 2022, probably, before we come to Canada or Toronto. Um, and, uh, yeah, normally that we would be in a writing mode at this point, 
we do we usually do like some festivals and stuff or we were going to do south america um but normally this would be the time when we're writing and recording a new album and that's what we're doing um so timing wise for camelot it, it's not as bad as a lot of our friends who have had to cancel tours which totally mm-hmm. sucks I mean, you guys have been on the on the road very steady since the album came out. Uh, you guys yeah. did a North American tour, then Europe, Asia, then you guys came back again to North America. Like you guys have been on the road a lot. So uh, I, I think this DVD comes at the perfect, at least for me, came at the perfect time. I mean, I can't go to a show. What's the next mm. best thing is watch you guys play in my living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like our longest tour ever for for a release. Um, we did two two U.S. tours. We were almost going to do three. Uh, we did two European tours. We did, like you said, we did Asia, Australia, um, and um, it's it was great, great tour. Having Lauren with us on the entire tour was also huge because uh, she was able to do the whole tour cycle, and she's um, just amazing performer and person. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a, a, a great tour. We're looking forward to. What's going to happen next? But I think for the fans right now, this is a uh, a nice holdover, and we're we're very proud of it. My last question for you is about the next album. You touched a little bit on it, saying that you had plans for March, pushing it later to maybe towards August of next year. Uh, what can you share about the next Camelot record? Yeah, I mean, we have actually twenty five songs right now, which has never happened, never. <laughs> And so now we have to kill a lot of darlings for this album, which sucks. But um, actually, I have a Zoom call today with Tommy and Oliver. We're going to be discussing that, <laughs> that very fact because we have to focus on 12, 13 songs, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's I mean, we, we have more material than ever. It's some really cool stuff. A lot of um, I think a lot of what what, what fans expect, but. Also, a lot of cool new surprises that, uh, you know, having Tommy now as one of the songwriters has been killer. He's, like, coming out with really cool stuff. Um, and then, of course, Oliver and myself and um, having Alex now as our drummer. He's got a lot of cool ideas. Uh, what a cool guy Alex is, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be exciting. We're slowly putting all the the parts together and... Uh, we're planning like things are going to happen middle of next year. Let's hope that happens. If not, at least we'll be ready. Yeah. Uh, once again, the album is out August 14th, and you get, you, get, you can pick your poison. Vinyl, digipack, a digital download, Blu-ray DVD. You pretty much get to choose uh, any one you want. It's going to be available on every single format possible. Just go pick it up. I, it's a wonderful DVD. You guys did a magnificent job. Uh, it really took me there. I felt like I was there. It, it, it really brought that essence of a live Camelot show with awesome. some extra flares and some extra add-ons. Perfect, man. Great to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time today. Hey, hey Pedro, are you recording this um, and yeah, editing? I'm, or you... I'm still recording right now, but I was going to stop right now. Do you want to uh, ask my son a question real quick? Sure. Yeah. Is he around? Thomas! Hey, this is Thomas. Hi. Hey, make how's it going? Make sure you look at the camera, okay? Good, how yeah, are get, you? Get a little bit more into the middle, otherwise we're going to cut you. There you oh, go. I like your shirt, Ninja Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. How was it to perform with your dad? Uh, it, was, it was really fun, actually. Uh, I like. I felt like it was one of my first times, first time ever like on like a live stage in front of so many people it's, it was just like so fun because i've i've always been watching from the crowd watching him perform and it's just it was just really fun and interesting that i i got to uh, uh sing up there and it was really fun and do, do you feel like your dad is a rock star but at the end of the day is just your dad or or every time he walks in from a tour you feel like he deserves a little bit of a special I don't know, a special consideration considering his status in, in the rock world. Uh, I, I, every, well, like when he's on tour, I think of him as like, like, uh, like I think of his, him as like a rock star, but when he's at home, he's, he's, he's dead. And <laughs> dead. <laughs> taking him to hockey practice, everything. <laughs> yeah, it's just dead. 
So that's really cool. Do you see yourself perhaps going into the music uh, career, music world one day, maybe as a musician or a producer or something like that? Um, or you rather stay at home? Your dad is out on touring too much for, and it's well, kind of leaving a bad taste in your mouth. I think I would probably go toward the. I I would either, if I if I didn't pursue sports, I would either do, um, like dance music or like, <laughs> rock and roll or something. <laughs> Do, do, you jam, do you jam on a guitar once in a while? Mm -hmm. um, he plays drums. I play some drums. Oh, wow. So you guys he's learning jam. about production, about um, songwriting. and So I'm trying to teach him all the aspects of, uh, of the business. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But listen, my, my son plays guitar and a little bit of bass as well. But he perhaps spends more time playing video games than what he should. That's, so. why, that's where he was when I called him. <laughs> you know it's it's it, it comes with the age uh you know my son is the same thing he spends his time playing fifa and all of those games and uh and and not as much on the guitar and then when he sees another young musician shredding it he's like oh my god that guy is so good and i'm like well he probably doesn't play video games <laughs> <laughs> sounds like me talking to you about hockey <laughs> he's like i gotta go now <laughs> oh yeah you play hockey what position I'm a center and a right winger. I tend to, I tend to switch to center for more ice time and right winger for better passes. Oh wow! Yeah, man. You 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 have then you would love spending some time in Canada. This is like hockey nation right here. Oh yeah, we went to a trip in Canada for a vacation, and I literally was in like paradise. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. he he loves Canada. Have, have you been to the Hockey Hall of Fame here in Toronto? No, we're gonna we're gonna take him there when when everything clears up. Yeah, um, you definitely need to check it out. It has, we're gonna go to Toronto and watch a a game and then go to the Hall of Fame. But yeah, you definitely have to do that. It's uh, the Hall of Fame is really really neat. It's really cool. And it's really mm -hmm. downtown Toronto as well. So uh, you get to see the city and you get to see the Hall of Fame. And uh, one thing I'll tell you is uh, when you walk around downtown Toronto, hockey's everywhere. Every yeah. restaurant, every bar. Everybody's talking about hockey, and and right now actually there's a, a bubble happening here in Toronto. Most of the teams are playing here in Toronto, so oh, it's right. Toronto and, and Edmonton. Uh, so the West Coast teams are playing in Edmonton, and the, all the East Coast teams are playing in Toronto. So uh, every everybody's in town right now playing games. Very cool, very cool. You guys are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, we thanks. can't really see it, but yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Say bye. Oh my God. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Nice I thought meeting. it'd be something different, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely something that we don't see every day on one of these chats on our channel. So, But I, I appreciate it. I have a son as well, so it's really nice that yeah. uh, to, to see your kid and uh, and see how much he's into sports. And, and to him, you're still his dad. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's all I ever want to be to him is, is just dad. I don't want to be he anything else. To drive him to practice and buy him some McDonald's and all of that stuff. And to, to, He's not asking you for a guitar pick or an autograph CD or, or a spot on the guest list. No, no, he's not. But he loves playing drums, and he's uh, he's le he's learning piano too, which is cool. Yeah, that's really good. That's yeah. really good. Uh, my son started picking up instruments after we started our YouTube channel as well. Uh, he wasn't really into music before, and then once we started the channel, and he started to get more into the music, start he started with guitar. And now he's moved to bass, so he's doing both guitar and bass. Uh, and and it gives you it gives you a different perspective on life. I think it really expands your horizons as a person. Totally. Uh, he also plays yeah. sports, so. Yeah, man. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for your time today. This was an absolute pleasure. And, and yeah, man. my just pleasure. Like, just like the DVD, you gave us a little bit of uh, extra content. So. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. <laughs> I, I really appreciate you doing this. This was an absolute blast. Yeah, man. My pleasure. And you guys be safe. And uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see you soon as well. Take care. All right, bud. Take care.